under a very small rock. I mean, you might not know who he was. I didn't know who he was until a couple of years ago. He's a, um, but he he was he's got a he's got a, a big history sort of thing. He was in news. I think he was in news um, at one point, uh, like a contributor, things like that. I think he was on radio show. He's written books. He now has his own YouTube channel. He has, uh, you know, he does different things. You'll find him on Facebook, all over the place. He's he's kind of all over the place. He's a um, he's a conservative uh, commentator, I guess. I don't even know what you call people nowadays. I don't even know what I'd call myself other than a podcaster at this point. He's um, I like him. I like a lot of stuff he says because he he has a common sense. There's a, there's a level of common sense to him. He's also, he has, he seems to just hate on everybody. He's, he hates on the Daily Wire all constantly and Ben Shapiro. And uh, he hates on, uh, he, he calls them like the, the conservative, I think he calls them the conservative shills or I forget what he, what he actually says, but he's basically calling like conservative sellouts, essentially. I don't know what in his mind would be, uh, what would be satisfactory to him as far as, what the message on a conservative end would be or, or even less than a conservative end, what would be like an anti woke sort of message, just push back on this, this very leftist agenda, this, uh, you know, very anti nationalism and all this kind of stuff that we see going on nowadays. I don't know what he would consider a good pushback on that. It's like, it's almost like all or nothing with this guy, but you hear him constantly curtail what he says so YouTube doesn't kick him off. Um, and he doesn't have as much to lose as, say, like a daily, the Daily Wire. The Daily Wire is a massive company. This is just one guy with a, you know, a good following. I think he's got over uh, a million and a half subscribers, so he's got a really good following. But at the same time, you don't have a company and a bunch of people back behind you. He probably has a couple people working for him that produce things for him and do different things for him. But you know, you can kind of get away with with stuff, maybe being demonetized for a little while and things like that. So the pushback that he gives on the daily wire and, and, and the like is, I think it's a little disingenuous. I'm going to read this article here. Um, so it says fact checked is, is Disney opening a pediatric transgender clinic in 2023 viral claim debunked. So I guess I'll read this. I guess he made this claim. Uh, social media users were, Left shocked after many discovered a video posted by YouTuber Mark Dice on June 28, 2023, when the creator claimed that Disney would be opening a few pediatric transgender clinics in 2023. In the video, Mark showed a clip from the Oceanside City Council meeting on June 21st, 2023, where a few people can be seen talking about a company's plans to open the clinic in the summer months of 2023. As the video went viral, similar posts were also seen across Facebook and other social media platforms. Many people were outraged by the news, and a few claimed that they would never go to Disney World after these clinics opened. While the company has made no such official announcement, it should also be noted that the person in Mark's video is not Bergman. In fact, he claim, the claims being made in the video were satirical. Mark himself has mentioned the same in the disclaimer se section of his video. So, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to read anymore. The thing about this video and Mark Dice in general, I think he does this thing where he's He's satirical and he's controversial and he says things for obviously for likes and views and all that kind of stuff as anybody would like I would do the same thing, um, um, but then he takes this other end where he criticizes criticizes these other outlets for not being strong enough against the the or, or for the movement I should say and against like like I said the leftist uh, cultural push so. I don't know what the verdict is on this guy yet. I'm not sure. I watch him. I watch his stuff because I do like I do like his point of view on things. I dislike his point of view on other things because, like I said, I'm a little more of a centrist. And he is, before the Overton window even moved further to the left, he was already right of center. So, and I was I was always left of center. Um, so I I would disagree with him on different things just in general. But I just don't know 100 percent if he's not a if he's not a grifter at this point, if he's not, you know, if this isn't just to build his brand, because there's obviously, there's obviously a, um, there, there's a whole group of people looking for this kind of almost like jock value that he provides 
Um, just like back in the day with like someone like Howard Stern, I mean, he was a shock jock DJ, right? I think I, I just get the feeling that he might be that guy as well, which makes him a bit disingenuous to me, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe he'll prove me wrong. <laughs>